Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, authenticate API gateway calls uh, based on credentials of your user and uh, AWS uh, Cognito user pool. So uh, if you have used AWS Cognito uh, servers before, uh, it gives you a couple of options. Uh, so let me go to Cognito and I will show you uh, what I mean. So uh, you can see there are two types of entities. One is user pools and another is identity pools. So user pool is kind of an uh, user management system that AWS provides uh, that can let users, so it could be a custom users with username password or federated entries like let's say Facebook sign-in or Google sign-in or Amazon sign-in uh, access uh, and, and the user uh, details be maintained uh, in AWS. So it's kind of a user management service. And uh, there is other thing called identity pools uh, in which uh, a specific reason is to uh, give access to AWS services. So uh, the users or uh, the entities that are authenticated or part of uh, identity pool uh, will get limited access to uh, the AWS services that you define in the policy that is related to that identity pool. Some time back I had created a uh, blog post which states the difference between cognito user pool and identity pool so you can take a look at it uh, but essentially uh, I already mentioned the difference if you need a kind of a user management uh, service then you can use user pool or if you just need an access to AWS services then you should use uh, the identity pool and again identity pool can use multiple uh, like inputs uh, user pool can be one of it but it can be other sign in as well so uh, if you see uh, this diagram you can see this is an identity pool so you can either use a cognito user pool or other identity providers or authentication providers and once uh, a user is authenticated using one of these uh, they will have access to AWS resources so uh, to summarize if you need access to AWS resources uh, need temp credentials for that use, use cognito identity pool else you can use uh, the user pool so the idea of uh, this video is to create a user pool and then create a user in it and then uh, validate API gateway calls uh, based on the credentials of Cognito that we get from the user authentication. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So let me go to Cognito and select manage user pools. Now once you do that uh, you can click on create a user pool. So let me call it Adhacker user pool and let's go ahead and let's just make keep everything default uh, but if you do not want you can go to next and next steps and choose and configure uh, all of this uh, so we will need need app clients uh, for in order to connect but we will come to that in a moment but for now let's keep everything as default and select create pool so this should create the pool for us uh, so we know what the pool id is uh, we will require this uh, momentarily so just keep this in mind uh, now in order to collect connect to this user pool you need to have a client so you can go to app clients right over here and select add an app client and here you can just say ATAC or client give some name that you want uh, refresh token expiration uh, this is configuration so whenever Cognito gets uh, authorized it gives you three types of token one is the access token uh, that is required for any uh, calls. The second is the refresh token that can be used to generate that access token. And the third is the ID token. So, and we will see uh, what those are in a moment. So we do not need a client secret, so that's fine. And we will use server-based authentication for now. And if you need, uh, like if you're developing mobile-based applications that do not need AWS credentials then you do not need this basically option two is to have server side uh, login access uh, which needs AWS credentials so uh, for not for this demonstration I'm going to select this option but uh, do choose other options based on uh, your use case so let's go ahead and create uh, the app client so you have the app client ID which is fine we will need this in some time as well now 
uh, I will go ahead and show you how this actually works. I have written a sample code uh, that actually is going to give me the ID token that we are going to use in API Gateway. So this is a call uh, that I have purposefully or deliberately en encapsulated because this has my AWS uh, credentials that are set in system properties uh, which my provider uses. So you can see it uses system properties credentials provider. So you can set system dot properties, the access key and the secret key to make sure uh, your uh, calls went through. So now we need username and password of the user. So let's go back, uh, go to users and groups. And let's create a new user. So you can click on create user for that. Uh, you can type in uh, the username that you want. So use the password as uh, admin at the rate one, two, three, four, five. And let's not give phone number and I will give the email address as open source for geeks at gmail.com okay and let's mark the email as verified and let's create a user and uh, you can see the user is created and you can see the account status as force change password so uh, you need to handle this separately so let's go back to code and uh, let's go ahead and add this details here so you have username as ethacore and the password uh, that I had set was admin at the rate one two three four five uh, you can see the odd type was this uh, and what we need is to handle that uh, status and we do not need this and is it okay let's just return something ABC uh, so that's fine so what I'm essentially doing here is I am authenticating uh, using the user that I just created and uh, it will not get authenticated because it is currently in force change password state so it will respond back with an odd challenge that you need to set a new password so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to change the password to 123456 so I've just added uh, one more six over there and that should work so you need client ID and user pool ID so let's go ahead and do that so let's go to general settings and copy the pool ID and paste it here and next we need is a client ID so go to app client ID and copy this and save it here so let's go ahead and run this now okay so you can see that it kind of worked so if you go to users now and refresh this uh, you can see the account status is confirmed uh, now what we will do is we will uh, comment this out uh, we just needed this to confirm our user we will remove this and uncomment this out so we essentially need uh, the ID token in order to validate our API gateway call. So, and I will change this password to the new password that we set and let's go ahead and run this. So we should get uh, the new uh, ID. So there we go. This is the ID token uh, that we have. So we will use this in the API gateway call uh, to authenticate. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So. Uh, you can go to API gateway so let's open it into a new tab and here we are going to create a new API and we will see how we can authenticate using the user pool that we just created so uh, let's go ahead and create a new API uh, we will call it validate and regional is fine uh, it, it needs to be rest not a WebSocket. so let's go ahead and create this API Okay, it's created. So let's go ahead and create a method. Uh, hold on. So let's create a resource first and let's call it validate user pool. And let's say create resource. And once you do that, we will create a method as well on that. So you can create a new method. Uh, let's call, let's use get for simplicity sake. So there we go. So uh, once you do that, uh, you need to go and configure authorizers. So you can go to authorizers and create a new authorizer. Now, once you do that, uh, you can choose some configurations that we will come in a moment. So let's say my ATACOR authorizer. And once you create an authorizer, you can choose what type it is. So you can either delegate it to Lambda to make sure it authorizes your API get recall, or you can simply choose Cognito uh, in that. In this case, we will use our ATACOR user pool uh, Cognito that we just used. Now it needs to have the header name or the key value in which you will send the ID token uh, that is that is written by the Cognito authentication service. 
so let me call it x cognito id and this is the header that we will use to uh, when we make this api call so uh, this is uh, just a regex if you need to validate this is not mandatory you can see there's an asterisk here so this is mandatory so let's go ahead and create this and our authorizer is up and running so let's go back to our uh, resource uh, let's go to our method so we need to define an integration for this uh, so let's just make it as mock because we do not need it to actually run some lambda so let's go ahead and save it and once you save it you will uh, see a bunch of configuration for tests so uh, in this you can select uh, I guess it's integration request uh, nope so let's go back I think it's met method request and yep there we go so you can see there's an authorization here so you can select this and you can select uh, the authorizer that you just created so just accept it and now let's go ahead and uh, deploy this API so create a new stage let's call it develop and we'll copy the same link in descriptions and save it and once you do that uh, you can go to uh, the stages and you can see that uh, this is deployed which is uh, validate user pool so uh, you can actually go ahead and run this and you can see it says unauthorized that's because obviously we have not provided uh, the correct token so there is one way to test it uh, right from here so you can go back to uh, the authorizer so you can test it from here you can see if I give ABC and test it will give 401 unauthorized and now let's try to give the actual token that we received from Cognito so let's copy this big token that we have here and copy these and make sure you have copied the entire thing uh, just paste it here and click on test and you can see it says uh, response code is 200 which means it succeeded so uh, you can do the same from your API REST client as well. Uh, so you can add a header, you can set the volume and we set as X cog ID and uh, request URL is nothing but the deploy URL. So let's go to stages, where is it stages and go to the API and copy this and paste it here you can see if you do this you will get 200 okay but if you change something uh, you can obviously see that it will give unauthorized so uh, that's the way you authorize oh, let's revert back okay and you can see there will be 200 again so this is the way you can authorize API gateway call to use the Cognito credentials so whenever you integrate Cognito SDK in your app you can get this uh, token ID uh, from the Cognito API call and once you get that uh, you can set up your API gateway to have a custom authorizer uh, which will use the user pool that you have set up and uh, it will automatically before invoking uh, the lambda or the mock or whatever you have configured with the API uh, gateway it will always authenticate best based on the header key that you have uh, set here so uh, that's how it is work uh, hope you understood uh, how you can integrate uh, cognito user pool uh, with api gateway to make sure only users with uh, authentic uh, credentials and cognito user pool can access that particular api so thank you <laughs>